My name is Nat Levan, and uh, this is the game of New Bedford. It's uh, a historically based game about the uh, whaling industry in the mid 1800s. Uh, I've been working on this for about two and a half years. So New Bedford is a town that in the mid 1800s was the center of the whaling industry. And at, at that time, it was the biggest, uh, most important commercial port in the United States and one of the richest towns in the world because of the whaling industry. In New Bedford, you're going to be placing your workers around the town to collect goods. You're going to use those goods to build buildings. You're going to use those buildings to help you put your ships together to send them out whaling and to be able to pay for the crew when the ship comes back into shore. I first had the idea when I was uh, really just sitting at home and watching some PBS. They were showing a really neat documentary about the history of whaling. And uh, I had recently reread Moby Dick and had these ideas for something I wanted to do with the board game. And it kind of came together while I was watching that show. I'd say the first prototype, it probably took me a, a few months. I spent a lot of time writing down what I wanted to uh, accomplish with the game and how I wanted all those pieces to work together. And it really looked much smaller than this. Everything was kind of smashed together on one single board and was uh, not as expansive of a game when I first made it. And it was really, it started taking on this form after I showed it off at my first Unpub event. And I got some suggestions for splitting it up into different pieces. And that's when the game really started to come together as this town that you're building. I'd kind of heard about Unpub. I knew sort of what it was as I was starting to put this game together, but I didn't have the game together enough in time for Unpub 3 uh, when I had heard about it and was kind of kicking myself for having missed it uh, when it was going on. And then I had this opportunity a couple months after that to be able to go to a Unpub regional, which was a bigger event. There were maybe uh, 15 to 20 designers there with tables and it was really horribly attended. I think there were maybe a dozen people who actually came to play games, but it was also a really fantastic experience because I got to play New Bedford with other designers as my first uh, venture into that world. And that was extremely helpful in helping me get the ideas in a better place. One of the biggest pieces of feedback I had was splitting up the board into two pieces. It had all been just a single square and that made no sense because some of the buildings were going into water, some of them were going onto land, and splitting that up into two different parts let me uh, actually build these spaces around the main board so that you can take the buildings, you can add them in, and now it looks like a town that's growing kind of organically as the buildings come into it. The other really big piece of advice I got was that uh, initially there were, uh, you had your ships and when you took the whales, you put them on the ships and actually moved them along with the tokens. And that was just really, really painful. It was, it was great before I went to Unpub, but I realized then, oh, okay, nobody wants to do this over and over again. And that really streamlined the game and sped it up quite a bit. A lot of my feedback came from people I know, which they tell you, you know, don't trust those people. But I feel really fortunate that I have uh, several groups that will tell me exactly what's wrong with my game and they're not afraid to tell me when it's bad. But, uh, you know, I took it to several other Unpub events, uh, had a lot of opportunities to show it to other designers. And when they started telling me, yeah, this is really good, you should be doing something with this, that's when I really started to pay attention and say, okay, I need to 
kick this up a notch. Uh, I finally went to an Unpub event at the Congress of Gamers down in uh, Maryland, and that was kind of a fortunate uh, event for me because I met Daryl Lauder, and he took a look at the game and he said, all right, well, this is good. And secretly, he was kind of going off on his cell phone during the middle of the game and, hey, I've got a game I need to show you. So that was a, a really kind of surreal experience for me. So at the time, I hadn't really specifically considered publishing. I knew that uh, I wasn't ready to publish a game on my own, so I was definitely in a place where I would prefer a publisher than trying to go out and do it by myself. But, you know, I didn't really pick publishers. I wasn't starting to pitch it to anyone. But uh, people were looking at the game and playing it and saying, well, okay, when's this going to be available to buy? Like, who's, who's going to be publishing this game? And that kind of told me, all right, I really need to find someone. Chris from Dice Hate Me Games and I had really just emailed uh, back and forth, and I knew that he had been interested in the game because uh, Daryl had taken a uh, print-and-play copy that he had with him, and uh, Daryl and Chris had played it at uh, BGGCon together, and they were talking about it on uh, The State of Games, which is Chris's podcast. and. They were really complimentary about it, so I, I had a good feeling that Chris was interested in the game, but we didn't uh, specifically make any plans for publishing until we spoke at Unpub 4. Uh, but by the time we got to Unpub 4, uh, we pretty much just sat down and said, all right, do we want to work together? Is this a thing we want to do? And the answer was yes. After Unpub 4, I really didn't do anything with New Bedford for a couple months. Part of that was that I'd been really concentrating on it uh, in the run up to Unpub, and then I needed a little bit of a break from it after that. And there were still things I wanted to add, and so eventually after a couple months, I started uh, working on adding more to the game, so it really was not finished even after the, uh, I signed a contract for it. And I think that's been really good is being able to keep working on it over the course of the year and a half since Unpub because even though it was a great game then, there have just been so many minor adjustments that uh, I think have really uh, made this game shine. I think one of the uh, things that was most helpful in, from working on New Bedford was just learning how to be more consistent and simpler when I'm describing rules. Uh, as a designer, the tendency is to have this really precise and exact description of how something works in the game. And when you're a player, you come to the game and that's not how you see it at all. You just need to know the most direct and uh, simplest way of understanding how something works. And so seeing it from that point of view is something that uh, New Bedford helped me to do. Part of my journey as a designer has been kind of trying to find my designer identity, finding those elements that uh, I really identify with, both as a designer and as a player, and bringing them into uh, other stuff I'm working on. Uh, the, uh, all the buildings that I've got in the game, you know, that's something I really like having that kind of uh, wide open choice that you can steer your own uh, destiny in a game. And so as I'm working on other designs, I'm trying to find ways to let players have those wide open uh, experiences, uh, but definitely on different levels. Uh, I'm taking 
that building idea and putting it into a, a very small game called One Card Wonder, where it's not quite as open, but you still have the options of building buildings to support what you're working on in the game. And building one, building two, building none of them are all equally viable paths. I'm working on another game that uh, uses railroads, and there's a map with a whole bunch of towns. All those towns kind of serve a similar purpose, but I'm not just rehashing the same old core mechanics of uh, oh, placing workers and going out and collecting something uh, to put that experience around the, uh, my identity. So I would say Unpub is, was important, continues to be important in every stage of the design here. It was really important early on to help me find these kind of big changes that make the game flow well. And it was obviously really important in actually being able to get the game in front of a publisher, meet that publisher, and sign a contract for it. And it continues to be important because I can still take this game out and work on something that I'm not sure exactly how it's going to go. I want to see how other people react to it. Uh, and that is just part of the continued process of improving. So Unpub really plays uh, a super important role in all of that. If you're a designer and you haven't taken your game to Unpub, then you're missing out on not only a lot of fun, but a lot of really good feedback that's just going to help make your game the best it can be. New Bedford, coming to Kickstarter sometime this year from Dice Hate Me Games. Sweet. <laughs> there, there we go. Good. We don't need there, two. there can't be two TCs. No, no, no. There can't. There can be only one. <laughs>